Get your free copy of the complete tutorial at www.teachucomp.com forward slash free. We will now discuss logical functions, which you can use to perform logical tests on the values in cells, and then return a result based on whether or not the value in the cell passed or failed the test. Logical functions take the form of an if-then-else statement. So you must know at least three different arguments before you can write a logical function. First would be the logical test that you want to apply to the cell. Second would be the cell value or formula to return if the test returns a true value or passes the test. And finally, you would need to know the cell value or formula to return if the test returns a false value or if it fails the test. Now when you write logical functions, they must have a certain syntax. That would be equals if open parenthesis, then the logical test to apply to the cell, comma, then the true response, meaning it passes the test, comma, and then the false response, and then the close parenthesis. So let's do an example. Let's say we wanted a cell C2 to look at cell B2 and evaluate whether or not that did or did not have content. And if it did have content, it would say cell contains data. And if it did not contain content, it would say cell is blank. We could create a logical formula that would do that. So we would click into cell C2 and write equals if open parenthesis. Next would be the logical test. In this case, we can use the is blank function to test whether or not a selected cell does or does not contain a blank. So is blank, all one word, open parenthesis, in this case cell B2, close parenthesis. So that's our logical test. Put in a comma and next we'd input the value if it's true. Now note that if you want the formula to display a text response for the true response or the false response, then you must place the response inside of a double quotation mark. If you want the cell to display dates, then those must be enclosed within pound signs. The only time that you wouldn't mark the type of value to return is if you want the cell to display a numerical result or calculate a formula. So in this case, we want a text response. In that case, we're going to have to put double quotes. So double quotes. And if B2 is blank, we want it to say the cell is blank. Double quote. Then a comma and then the value to return if there is content, in this case B2 is not blank, we'll put in double quote, the cell contains data, double quote, close parenthesis. So here we can look at the general syntax of a logical formula. First we have equals if, then we have the logical test, then a comma, the true response, a comma, and the false response, followed by the close parenthesis. So when we press enter on our keyboard or click the enter button in the formula bar, it says that the cell contains data. If we use the autofill handle to copy that down a few cells, you can see how it changes depending on what's in cell B2, B3, B4, B5, and so on and so forth. And of course, if you add content to one of those cells, or if you delete content, it changes the response of the logical formula. Now a nested logical formula is one that passes the cell through a secondary logical test if it fails the first. Now these formulas are useful for determining the value of a cell by placing it through several different tests, displaying different results based on which test it eventually passes. You can nest up to 64 additional if statements behind your original. The syntax for these would be equals if logical test 1, comma, true response, comma, if, open parenthesis, logical test 2, comma, true response, comma, false response, close parenthesis, close parenthesis. Now you must remember to close all of the open parentheses for every if statement that you nest within the logical function at the end of the formula. In the iteration I just gave, since there would be two if statements, there would be two closing parentheses at the end of the formula. 
Let's do an example again. Let's say that we want in cell C2 a function that looks to see whether a first name has been entered, and if not, it says no first name entered. Then we want it to see if the last name has been entered, and if not, it says there's no last name entered. And if there is a first name entered and a last name entered, we want it to concatenate or smush together the values of A2 along with an open space along with the value in B2 so that we have a full name field that takes the first name, a literal space, and then the last name. So we could do that by using nested logical functions. In this case, we would click into the full name field and then write equals if open parenthesis. So let's say we want to see if the first name field is blank. So we'll do is blank again. And the value is A2. So if is blank A2, let's have it give us a text response. So once again, double quotes. And let's say no first name entered. Close the double quotes, and then a comma. Now we want it to evaluate whether a last name has been entered. So we'll put in another if statement. Open parenthesis is blank B2. And if B2 is blank, comma, then we want it to return, once again, a text response. So in double quotes, no last name entered. And assuming that neither A2 nor B2 is blank, so comma, meaning both of them contain data, then we want it to concatenate the two fields. So here we'll just put in the last function, in this case concatenate, open parenthesis, in this case concatenate a2, comma, a literal text space, so double quote, literal space on the keyboard, double quote, comma, with B2, close parenthesis, and then close parenthesis for our first if, close parenthesis for our second if. Go ahead and press enter on your keyboard, or enter in the formula bar. And here you can see the concatenation of first name and last name. Let's go ahead and copy that down the column. Now we can see for the blanks it says no first name entered. So let's say we put in a first name. Now it says no last name entered. And once we enter a last name it concatenates them. So that's exactly what we want. Now often, it's the case that you want to know if a cell meets multiple criteria. So you can use the AND and OR functions to find this out. The AND function will return a true value if the cell that is being evaluated passes all of the logical tests that follow the AND function. The OR function will return a true value if the cell that's being evaluated passes any of the logical tests that follow the OR function. Note that you can evaluate up to 255 different logical tests after the AND and OR statements. So when you look at how you can combine these tests with the IF function, or many nested IF functions, you can begin to see how you could start to become a very powerful formula creator. Now you can run cells through a battery of tests, and then decide what function to perform or value to display based on the results shown from the tests. Now the general syntax when combining the if function with the and and or functions would be as follows. So equals if, open parenthesis, and, open parenthesis, logical test 1, comma, logical test 2, comma, etc., etc., close parenthesis, comma, true response, meaning it passed all those tests, comma, false response, meaning it failed one of the tests, close parenthesis. Or if you did the OR statement, it would be equals if, open parenthesis, OR, open parenthesis, logical test 1, comma, logical test 2, comma, etc., close parenthesis, comma, true response, meaning it passed any one of those tests,
comma, false response, meaning it didn't pass any of those tests. Close parenthesis. So let's do another example on screen. Let's say we want to use the if and function to determine whether or not it has any data entry in the first name or last name column. So we could say if there's no first name or last name, no data entry performed. If there is just one blank cell, it could say no first name entered, or if there's the last name not entered, it could say no last name entered. So we're just going to make this formula a little bit more specific. So let's just delete it out and write it again from scratch for a little more practice. So let's start with cell C2 again. This time we'll put in equals if, open parenthesis, and, open parenthesis. Once again, let's do is blank. Is blank a2, close parenthesis, comma. So we're saying if it's blank in a2 and is blank b2. And so we close the parentheses for the if and, and then we decide what's the value if it's true. So if both a2 and b2 are blank, then we want it to say no data entry. So in double quotes, let's say no data entry, meaning we don't have a first or a last name. Then we'll put a comma. Now let's say we wanted to go through nested if statements. So if, open parenthesis, is blank, let's say just A2. Well, if just A2 is blank, that means that at least a last name's been entered. So we can go ahead and put in a comma, and then the value, if it's true, we'll say no first name entered. Comma. Once again, value of false. Another if statement, once again, is blank, let's say b2. And if b2 is blank, once again in double quotes, we'll put in no last name entered. Otherwise, we'll just concatenate. In this case, we'll concatenate a2, comma, double quote, literal space, double quote, comma, b2. Close parenthesis, close parenthesis, and close parenthesis. One more. Note that Excel also color coordinates the parentheses, so you can tell how far back you'll need to put in the closing parentheses. So here it says Don Smith, and if we copy it down the column again, notice when it goes to the blank cells where there is no first name or last name, now it says no data entry. Let's say we just type in a last name. So if we put in the last name, let's say Smith, exit the cell, it says no first name entered. Let's delete Smith out, it goes back to no data entry. Put in a first name, let's say Joe. Leave the cell, it says no last name entered. Put in Smith again, now it actually produces the concatenated full name. So that's giving us a little bit more flexibility and specificity as to what's missing from our data entry. And so you can see that we can use the if, and, and or functions in order to create very powerful functions that allow us to show a bunch of different tests on cells. Like what you see? Pick up your free copy of the complete tutorial at www.teachucomp.com forward slash free.